Hello, I would like to welcome everybody. My name is Abby Lopez, and I'm with very special sister in Christ, as well as yours, Patricia Richards. Pat, well, how would you like us to call you, Patricia? Or uh, Pat? I, I've been called Pat now since I was a very young person, so I prefer Pat. All right, so we have Pat with us. I'm gonna ask her a bunch of questions, but I would like you, as, as you listen to it, tune in. You can always post comment or when we talk, we want you to know, maybe perhaps we will share, Pat will share about her life, but I want you to always look from perspective, how can I apply what she is talking about? How can I do this? How can I resolve my problem? Whatever you struggle with. So I'm gonna ask Pat many questions and hopefully you're gonna post extra. So at next session, when she'll be with me, we're gonna answer your questions or we're gonna talk about your comments. So Pat, I would like you to start with your testimony. Would you like to share? Sure. Tell us your latest testimony. Today is January 24th, and you went to the doctor on Christmas Day. Well, I, I had begun to have problems. I've had, to, I've had thyroid issues probably, actually, probably most of my life, and they were undiagnosed. But I began to have some problems back about, uh, it's probably been about eight months ago mm -hmm. and there was some slight swelling that came up on my neck there and uh, I began to have a lot of problems swallowing and I was getting choked on you know I would be eating something especially something kind of grainy mm -hmm. and uh, I would I would get choked on it and at the same time I began to lose my hair I thought I was going to go bald and uh <laughs> Wow. I uh, started having, uh, gaining weight, although I hadn't, actually I was trying to lose some weight uh -huh. and, and, but I couldn't, I couldn't lose any weight. So I was gaining weight and I was losing my hair and I had this little swelling. So I go to my regular MD and she says, yes, she says, I think you need to go over and uh, see, uh, uh, I can't remember what his actual phys, uh, title Mm -hmm. Yes, but anyway, I went to see this this other doctor, and uh, he does an MRI. He gets his little MRI out, and he scans me there, and he said, "Yeah, yeah, there's something there, and it's pretty good size." Mm -hmm. And uh, he said, "I hate to say the c word, but I think this looks like cancer to me." Um, and so, what I, did you feel? What did you thought? Think? Um, you know, I honestly, it's it's really kind of weird. I I didn't really feel any different at all. It didn't. I, it concerned me, of course, yes. mm -hmm. but uh, it was not. I I didn't have a very strong reaction to it. Hmm. <laughs> I mean, I don't know why I didn't. I just didn't. And he said, um, he said he keeps looking at it and he's talking to me. He said, yeah, he said, it looks, it looks like it's cancer, but he said, it also looks like it's uh, fairly well contained. Mm -hmm. He said, let's, let's do a biopsy. And uh, I had, I, I thought about that for a minute and I said, no, I, if, if you think it's contained, I don't think I want to do a biopsy. I'm, I'm not ready for that yet. So we, we chatted, which I'm pretty sure for him, we're in a very small rural area and people here pretty much if their doctor says whatever their doctor says, yes, that's what they do. So, so you trust your doctors, correct? Yeah. yeah. I, I, I do trust them, but I also trust my own, my own heart. I trust the Holy spirit in me more than I trust doctors. Amen. Can you talk more about that? Just explain people, listener, what does it mean for you to trust more of your heart, what's happening than the doctor that you see physically? Well, I learned many years ago, uh, I became a Christian in my 20s, and um, I, I never trusted myself or anybody else around me. Mm -hmm. It was uh, just because of my childhood and the way I was brought up. Yeah. <clears throat> but uh, so I spent a lot of hours wondering, is this God speaking to me or <clears throat> excuse me? 
-hmm. or is this the pizza I ate too late last night before I went to bed or, <laughs> you know, or is this just in my own head because I would hear things in, you know, crazy thoughts that I would have. So it took me many years um, to really discern, I guess, I don't necessarily like that word, but to really understand what God's voice sounded like. And a lot of people will tell you, you know, that it's this overpowering voice. And But what I learned uh, was usually the overpowering voice is my own ego. Uh, mm -hmm. It's my own, it's, you know, it's my own, it's what grandma told me that I had to do when I was a young girl. You know, you, you know, young girls have to act this way. Young girls have to do that. Young, you know, this, um, or maybe um, it, it, maybe it was came from some other TV preachers or, or mm -hmm. whatever. And uh, as I began to just read my Bible and get closer to God, I realized that I began to have uh, if I would if I would just be still and be quiet and trust that voice. Mostly, that voice came as kind of a intuition yes. or or uh, just a. a calm peaceful feeling hmm. and in the beginning back when I was younger it was very hard for me to connect with that voice but as I've as I've come to know the Lord better uh practice that sense of tuition followed that sense of tuition I've began to trust it more and more because I found out that that is the reliable voice it is not that voice that I hear that says Oh, you've got to do this. You can't do that. You know, you'll die. You know, you've got to listen to the doctors. You know, that's generally not the voice I want to listen to. And I have to quiet that voice down so I can mm -hmm. hear this, this very quiet inner voice that will just speak to me. And it's usually very peaceful and when, and it's, and I'm very calm. Mm -hmm. Uh, it, it brings a sense of calm to me, uh, when it's God's voice. So I listen. So it, it comes with practicing. It comes with practicing. Mm -hmm. You do not know if, if you, some, some children, maybe they were raised in a home where they practiced that their entire life. That was not my home. <laughs> in my home, there was always screaming and yelling and a lot of cussing and a lot of violence and a lot of anger and a lot of, you know, just, it, it was, it was just always noisy and loud and anger. Mm -hmm. And that was the voice that I grew up with. Uh, so it took me, it, it took me actually several years, many years mm -hmm. to really learn how to listen and to that voice and to learn how to trust it. But I, but I trusted that voice on this day. And I said, No, I don't think I want to do a biopsy today. I've read some articles. Uh, I, I do like to study. I do like to, I do like to uh, read. I, I actually read a lot of scientific documents and different things. And you have to sort those out. Some of those, some of those, you have to kind of sort those out. Some of them are true. And some of them are not so true. So you, you, you know, you have to, you have to sort all that out, but I'd read several uh, papers about they thought that often if a cancer was well contained and you had a biopsy done, that sometimes that would, uh, if you if you punctured that outer realm or shell or whatever, I'm not exactly sure what that's called, but uh, that it that it could cause the cancer to spread. So I said, no, I don't think we're going to do that today. I just, I don't, I just don't. So feel you knew, it seems like you knew more than the doctor. Oh, I don't think I knew more. I think the doctor is trained to do surgery. This is what you do when you have cancer. This is what you do. You, you have surgery. Mm. You, you, this is just what you do. I, mm. I, I think that's what he's trained to do. And uh, he's just doing what he's trained to do. And I was just doing what I was trained to do. <laughs> I, <laughs> that's right. <laughs> And, uh, and so he, he, we talked, we talked for several minutes mm -hmm. and he said, well, I, you know, I think it'll be okay if we watch it for, you know, for a few months. But he said, I, I'll just be honest with you. He said, I think it's cancer. I think it'll probably grow. Mm -hmm. And, uh, I think you'll want to have this removed. So I mm -hmm. said, okay, we'll, mm -hmm. you know, okay. I'm wasn't 
disagreeing with him. I wasn't agreeing with him. I was just in a, in a neutral zone at that mm-hmm. moment. Um, mm-hmm. So I just go home and I just, uh, you know, I, I really didn't get into the struggle with my own emotions about this. Uh, there was many times when fear would try to grip me over this. And I just said, no, I know what scripture says. I know that uh, Jesus carried our sin, our sickness, all on the cross. You know, uh, I know that he, he came to give us life. He came to give us life more abundantly. I know that the Holy Spirit lives in me. And where the spirit of God is, there's life. Yes. And this is not life. Cancer is not life. Mm-hmm. And, and I just don't accept it. But I never got into that struggle with myself of, oh, you, you've got to quote scripture every day. You've got to, you know, you, you've got to do this. You've got to do that. I just did not let myself get into that mode. Although there were several times I could have. Mm. You know, it, Can I interject one thing for the little listener? If you are going to the doctor, or perhaps you just came back from the doctor, maybe that was your child, and the doctor said these words, the C word upon your child, how do you respond? Listen to Pat, listen exactly to what she's saying. Everything, your heart will determine your response, your reaction. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and and one thing that I did not do, and I've seen many people do this to their detriment, is try to deny that the cancer's there. Oh, I don't know that I don't have cancer. That's yes, Mm -hmm. you do. Yes, you do. And and uh, you cannot you cannot deny it away. You can only believe and trust that God took care of it. It is there. It does have to be dealt with either medically mm-hmm. or uh, faith through faith. One or the other, you've got to deal with it or it will kill you because I've seen many people just try to deny that they had cancer. No, I don't have cancer. No, I don't have cancer. No, I don't have this illness. No, I don't have this problem. And they died. So good that you're talking about this. So good because people, Christians, we yes. don't know how to respond. We really don't know until we are there at this place with the doctor, until the moment we hear exactly. you this and that. Talk about it as much as possible. Right, mm-hmm. right. And um, I, I've, mm-hmm. I've watched my brother go through um, illness that mm-hmm. many times mm-hmm. I thought he would die. Mm -hmm. I had no, there was nothing in me that said he's going to live. Thankfully, he had it in him Mm -hmm. (laughs) to say, I will live and not die. Amen. Uh, And you were watching him. You were. I was watching him. him. I watched him go through all of these uh, different stages of this illness that he, he was born with a genetic kidney disease. And I watched him go through all these stages of illness very carefully. I watched him very carefully. And and as true to form, sometimes he handled it perfectly. Mm -hmm. Sometimes he did not. He did not. Because that's right, because he's because he's human and we are all subject to giving in to those internal pressures and fears. So so sometimes he would give into that fear. I think now he never, he never said that to me, but watching his responses to things very carefully, Mm -hmm. but then he would always come back to no, I'm not giving into this. I'm not giving into fear. Mm -hmm. I know what God has said. I know what God has said in scripture. I know what God is saying to my own heart. I know that I will live and not die, even so, though the, there were times of great fear for him. So see, if you, he, if you were at the doctor or you are falling apart because you've hurt, you have a sickness, don't judge yourself. Don't exactly. judge yourself. Exactly. Do, don't, what do not mm-hmm. do, because that starts the struggle. Mm-hmm. And I want to tell you, peace is mm-hmm. where healing 
of any of any problem i don't care if it's healing your physical body yes. i don't care if it's healing your marriage yes. i don't care if it's healing your finances i don't care if it's healing the relationship that you have with your children or yes. or whoever healing mm -hmm. comes mm -hmm. in peace if you are not in the bible calls it the peace that passes understanding yes and the reason it's called peace that passes understanding is because there is no reason for you to have peace your whole world may be falling apart yes. but if you and and you may be and you may be right in agreement with it yes my my, my life is falling apart my world mm -hmm. is falling apart my yes. body's falling apart everything but you if you can move out of that fear that place of fear yes. and and mm -hmm. persuade your heart mm -hmm. that god's word is true and move back into that place of peace mm -hmm. that is where healing occurs no matter what it is mm -hmm. uh, uh, allow me go back to this point because we are taught to respond even movies anything that we watch we hear someone says negative thoughts or doctor or whatever conflict or divorce you hear we panic even if this happened to you don't judge yourself i let me repeat this don't allow yourself thinking and stay in that pit but just move as pat says to the place you can do it right you gotta believe that you can do step by step by step you fight these repetitive thoughts inside you you yes you have to learn you have to learn how to uh relax uh -huh. your body right right breathe you know yes get mm -hmm. deep breath you have to learn these things you have to you have to learn how to physically relax yourself because it is in that physical relaxation yes and and stillness Mm -hmm. of of not just your mind but also your body mm -hmm. uh that's the place where we can hear god and that's the place where we enter yes. into that peace and that calmness mm -hmm. uh that and and we we know we know what god said yes god i don't deny the fact that i have cancer <laughs> the doctor sees it I, it's it's there there's no denying it but uh, but it's there. What I said to it was, you're here illegally. Right, God right. says, says he came to give me everything that pertains to life and godliness. And that does not leave anything out. I can't find anything that goes on. If, if it doesn't go under the category of life, it's mm -hmm. got to go under the category of godliness. And that covers everything. There's nothing that that does not cover. So Jesus came to give us everything that pertains to life and godliness. So if this is in my body, it's, it's here illegally. It's not here. Jesus is not doing this to teach me something. God's not God's not trying to teach me something I did not uh, let, you know, this did not happen to me because I let the devil in. This did not, you know, this is not of God. This, this is, is not of God. So say it to your sickness. This is yes, not, of, this God is to not of God. God is not doing this. You know, it, that never even entered my mind when mm. the doctor said that. I, I can't, you know, I can't, I can't actually tell you why I was as calm as I was, except that I know who God is. I've, I've known God for many years and we've had long, long conversations and I know that he loves me. And I know that even if there is something there illegally, that it's, that, that it's not there. Mm -hmm. it's by not. Him, by but you're not friend. denying it's I'm there not but denying. It's not there. <laughs> i'm not denying it was there yes, i think that's a little crazy you know that's kind of like uh that's kind of like saying this is not my hand <laughs> you know uh this this doesn't belong to me because it's got something wrong with it you know it's yes no that's it's crazy mm -hmm. the doctor saw it he saw it with his little scope he knows what he he's probably looked at thousands and thousands of them you know he knows what it looks like mm -hmm. uh, so anyway so i go back home and uh for about six months and uh during those six months like i said there were there were times when it's when uh, when the thought would come to me You're right what are you gonna do if he says this is cancer he says it's growing what are you gonna do 
and you watch it right every day almost yeah yeah, yeah because yeah. yeah yeah and there were some there were some other things that i did there were some health things that i did right. that that i felt like i listened to my heart and i felt like that they would help me strengthen my body strengthen my immune system you know i just i just felt like there were some things that i could do to help myself although i even though i asked the doctor i said uh, is is there anything that that i can do Mm -hmm. No, I don't think there's anything you can do. But I listened to my heart and I did hear, do do some things, this this will strengthen you. So I did them. And what I was that? I trusted what was my that? heart. Yeah. What was that? Could you tell oh, people what was uh, that? There's some things, uh, uh, one of the things I did, there's mineral oil that I had started using. Hmm. And uh, all of us folks that are around 50 or over 50, almost every one of us are uh, shy in minerals. So we all need mineral supplements. Uh, this is a spray that I had started using recently that actually my brother told me about. Mm -hmm. And um, I had been spraying it on uh, my back and, and my hips because of uh, some other issues that I had. And so every night I said, you know what, I'm just gonna start putting this on my neck, on my thyroid. So I would rub this mineral spray uh, on my thyroid. The, I, I did some changes in, in some diet things. I did some changes in some supplement things. And uh, I went and had a good uh, blood panel done by a doctor that, that, uh, that I trusted in you. I did, I did everything practically mm -hmm. that I knew to do. But in peace, it wasn't so panicking, right? Right. I was not panicking. I was not calling everybody in the country to pray for me. As a matter of fact, uh, I think probably uh, Jim and maybe maybe two or three other people were the only people that I actually even talked to uh, talked to them about it. That's true. You didn't tell me. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I I didn't talk about it because uh yeah because you when you start talking about that it builds whatever yes. it is you put your focus on builds in your life yes. and number so one number one that's here. exactly right that's exactly mm -hmm. right whatever you put your focus on that's more of what you get back in and if you start talking to people and mm -hmm. they have fears mm -hmm. of their own about cancer uh then then that fear is often catchy so <laughs> yes. so yeah you it, it's Fear spreads. Negative, so, so. negative feelings spread mm -hmm. very quickly. Positive mm -hmm. sp feelings, not so much, but negative feelings spread very quickly. So, so. I want to just add, I'm going to let you finish your testimony. It's okay. powerful, but be careful who you say things to. I'm yes. talking from my own life. So I will, Pat, I will want you, if we remember to, after you say your testimony, come, I would like you to come back and talk about what you were talking with me about at Polish session, that people want to talk to you and tell them why, because it's important who you say, what you say. It, it's very important. Uh -huh. I knew that if I went to Jim and talked to Jim about it, you know, right. he loves me no. and I have a very close relationship, right. but I knew that he would not panic. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I knew that he would not get into, you know, oh, you got to pray and you got to, you know, rebuke the devil. I knew that he would just support me, that yeah. he would give me prayer support. What your he heart would, needs. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. He would, uh, he would see me well and healthy. He would, he would see, as we often say, he would see the end from the beginning. Yes. The end yes. is that I have a very long and prosperous life. That is the end. Mm. And um, so, so I trusted, I trusted him. I, he knew about it. I didn't, get, when I went to him and talked to him about it, I didn't get into panic. He didn't get into panic. We were both, I just told him, this is, this is the deal. This is what's going on. I just want you to know about it. Mm -hmm. He told, you know, and um, uh, so, yeah so, so time time went on i just when i would think about it at night when i would rub my mineral oil on my throat mm -hmm. you know i would just tell it you're here illegally you cannot you just can't stay you just can't stay mm -hmm. and um so time went on yes. uh right before doc uh right before christmas i think it was the on the 22nd of december i had my next uh doctor's appointment mm 
And so uh, driving to the doctor that day, I'm thinking to myself, now, what are you going to do? Although I, I would have to say that I could tell that the swelling was not there. It was not as, it was not as large. I could tell that it had actually gone down or I thought it had gone down, but I didn't want to, I, you know, I didn't want that to be the judge. I didn't want anything I saw with my physical eyes. I yes. didn't want that to be the judge. I didn't yes. focus on that, but yes. I could tell it had, it had gone down. I wasn't choking on food any longer. Uh, so I go to the doctor, but the thought crosses my mind. Now, what are you going to do mm -hmm. if he says, it's cancer. Mm -hmm. We've got to do surgery. What are you going to do? And I thought about that. I just sat and thought about that for a minute. I didn't, you know, and I said, well, first off, I'm not going to decide what I'm going to do now. I'll decide what I'm going to do when he says it, just like I decided what I was going to do when mm -hmm. he said it originally the first time. Would you suggest that to everyone or you think preparation is also good? Um, to prepare your answer. I, no, I, for me, for me, mm -hmm. I, not everybody reacts. Yeah. I think you just have to listen to your own heart. Gotcha. gotcha. I think for me mm -hmm. to prepare an mm -hmm. answer would put me in that struggle. Cause we, we subconsciously do prepare. You want or you're not, you just, you just play it in your head. I'm just, I'm just saying, no. uh, you know, I, whatever, whatever he says, I'm going to stay in peace and calm. That's good. So listen. That was, you know, that was the decision I made. Well, whatever it is that he says, yes, I will think about it. Yeah. I will pray about it. Mm -hmm. I will listen to my heart about it. And then I'll make that decision. So I go into the doctor's office and I'm in the, I'm in his little room and he comes in and he says, Oh yeah, I remember you. He said, last time you was here, you wouldn't let me poke you with my big needle. Are you going <laughs> to let me poke you with my big needle? And those are, those are pretty big needles, which was one reason I didn't want to do it. <laughs> but, um, I said, uh, I kind of laughed and said, no, I really don't think I'm going to today. And he laughs. He thought it was funny. <laughs> and I would still say that, you know. So I lay down on his table and he puts the gel on there and he gets his little thing out and he's looking and and he's looking on this side. This was where this was where the growth was. He's looking on this side and I noticed that he's got a little wrinkle up here in his forehead, you know, and he's looking. So he moves over to the other side and he's looking and he comes back and he's looking and he moves, you know, and he's just going back and forth. He's looking for something. Where is it? Where is it? And so <laughs> So, and I'm, I'm chatting about something. I don't really know exactly mm -hmm. what I'm, I'm talking to him about, but mm -hmm. I said, uh, so what do you, what do you see? Well, he just wipes my throat off and turns around like he's walking out of the room. I said, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute where are you going? It was almost as if it kind of made him mad. I don't know. <laughs> Slam the door. <laughs> <laughs> but he said, uh, he said, there's nothing there but an empty nodule. He said, there's a nodule there. It's empty. There's nothing Hallelujah. in it. He said, that side of your thyroid is slightly swollen. It is slightly large. But he said, there is absolutely nothing in that module. He said, you don't even need to come back for a follow-up. He said, I don't want to see you again. <laughs> I don't want to see you again. Get out. <laughs> I just turned and walked out of the room. <laughs> so... <laughs> So, um, yeah, so I thought that was kind of an interesting reaction uh, yes, it was from a doctor, amazing. but you know, and I can't, you know, people say, well, what did you do? How did you, how? I did not do anything other than just trust. I stayed in that calm and peaceful place. Mm -hmm. I know who God is. I know my own heart. I know when my own heart is, is telling me something. I've learned to listen to my body. And, and I, like mm -hmm. I said, I think that the few things that I actually did mm -hmm. is, is what helped me, regardless of whether the doctor says that they could or not. Yes. I think they did. Mm -hmm. I, you know, uh, and uh, there are other things still Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. 
that I still think that I need to do to mm -hmm. support my body, yeah. to support the health of my body. I think there's still some things that I need to do. Mm -hmm. um, as we get older, we have to kind of change how we how we eat and how the, the I'm not getting enough exercise. I'm, you know, it's winter, it's cold here. It rains buckets and buckets for days on end. I'm not. Hold on. In your state, that's cold, right? I'm in yeah. Chicago. Okay. So you're it's, cold. <laughs> <Come yeah. to. laughs> well, it's not cold like it is in your state. A uh, yes. week before last, we no, were I in think. the, we were in the sixties, high sixties every day. Last week, uh -huh. uh, we didn't get above freezing, uh, but there was three days that we didn't even get above freezing. So, so we go from, <laughs> we go from tropical weather to, to oh, Chicago that. weather in a, that's in a heartbeat. Even worse. That's even worse. Yeah, it is. It, it takes, it's a harder toll, at least on my body. It takes oh, more yes. of a toll on oh, my yeah. body. Mm -hmm. And so there are still some things that I, that I really, I need to change and really need to do, yes. but you know, but I trust mm -hmm. God. Mm -hmm. I trust my own heart. I know that, that I hear God. Mm -hmm. And I know that even if I make mistakes and don't follow Yes. What what I believe is right. That as long as I do not get off into that fear and panic and and uh, uh, distrusting God and uh, that mm -hmm. that all I've got to do is just come back. I just I just come back to sanity. I come back to to trusting again. I come back to that peaceful place again, yes. and uh, and we just go from there. We mm -hmm. just go from there. I don't beat myself up over you know. Mm -hmm go in there. I don't, I don't, you know, get down on myself because I let myself go there. I just pick myself up and mm -hmm. off we go again. Mm -hmm. uh, I often, I often think about uh, learning to listen to God. <laughs> uh, I had foster children and one of my foster sons loved animals. And, and at the time we, I finally I finally got a cat for him and later got a dog. He loved mm -hmm. animals. We didn't have any animals at the time. So we began to watch this dog show on TV, uh, The Dog Whisperer. Oh, of course. Everybody yes. knows him. <laughs> yes. And I say that uh, not only did he teach me how to train my dog, he also taught me how to train my kids. Mm -hmm. And, <laughs> and right. yeah. And he, he, he taught me some things about learning to listen to your heart. Mm -hmm. You know, he, he mm -hmm. talks about energy quite a lot with your animals and how, um, how we need to, we have to learn the dog's mm -hmm. language to train mm -hmm. them. You know, yeah. we have to teach them to, to look directly in our eyes. If you can yeah. get a dog to look at you in your face, you can train them. If mm -hmm. that dog will not look at you mm -hmm. on command, mm -hmm. you, you'll have a very hard time mm -hmm. training that dog. Mm -hmm. And I, you know, and I began to think about that and I thought, you know, that's an awful lot like learning to listen to God. Mm -hmm. We do not speak God's language. We have to learn mm -hmm. God's language. And, and it's a quiet, soft language. Yes. And, um, and we have to train our own hearts mm -hmm. to hear that, hear that voice mm -hmm. and trust that voice. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and the dog whisperer helped me understand that. <clears throat> he, he helped me, uh, he helped me understand how to be with my foster kids, be the leader of the pack. Yes. <clears throat> yes. Yeah. Because some people, some people, particularly with children and with dogs, they don't understand that, they feel much safer and much more secure if you are very strong and confident mm -hmm. in mm -hmm. who you are. And I'm, I'm, I'm pretty strong and confident in who God is in me. That's, I have a lot of confidence in that. And I think it's necessary. Yes. yes. I think that's an important issue. Mm -hmm. So what now? That, have, uh, you are also a mentor. You uh, deal with many people, very variety of problem, different problems. You email them, you write letters uh, via Messenger, uh, Facebook. I mean, you name it. You talk personally, you over the phone, the video call. Would you tell us uh, what kind of uh, 
you mentioned to me one person uh, lately, and would you share with us what what was her problem? I believe this will help us, our listeners a lot because that was pretty common. And also, what did you tell her that that will relate to what you are talking about? Yeah, there's You're dealing I think, with thoughts. Uh huh. Yeah, I um I, I I work with a program that my brother developed, Jim Richards, called Heart Physics, and I have been a heart physics coach for about seven years. I kind of lost count <laughs> mm-hmm. at this stage and uh, and probably have talked to thousands of people about these issues over the last seven or eight years yes. and uh, it has been the uh, using this heart physics program has been one of the most effective tools that I have ever used in in helping people deal because I, I talk to people I talk to people that have been molested as children. Mm -hmm. I talk to people that have been extremely abused as Mm -hmm. children. I talk to people that have, that are in horrible, violent relationships. Mm -hmm. I talk to people that have, that are in, or that have been in any, just unimaginable situations Mm -hmm. and uh, help them because of, because those horrible situations cause us to form beliefs that we call heart beliefs mm-hmm. uh, or subconscious beliefs. Mm-hmm. And they, whether we are aware of it or not, they guide us mm-hmm. right or wrong, good or bad. They guide us our entire life. Mm-hmm. We find ourselves uh, repeating patterns in our life. Oh, yes. uh, m- many women Mm-hmm. find themselves being attracted and drawn to all abusive men. Mm. Uh, we find ourselves sabotaging potentially great situations in our life. So I have talked to these people over the years, many mm. of them, thousands of them over the years. This is a girl that sent me a letter just actually this past week mm-hmm. said, there's a person, there's a person in my life who is not a believer and who's into new age, mm-hmm. left wing, trendy, ideolo- ideologically, mm-hmm. I'm sorry, ideological okay. ideas of this generation and who cherry picks verses they like from the Bible, mm-hmm. who regard Jesus as some hippie pacifist who is all about chasing happiness. They basically think that this is a principle that they can apply to themselves and claim opportunities and material gain through this verse. Mm-hmm. But this verse is about the song of the father who do the will of God, not aliens, whose father is the God of this world and who couldn't care less about his purposes on earth, but only want the benefits and riches he may provide, right? Mm-hmm. Or maybe I'm wrong. Wow. She, <laughs> she goes on to say about how little peace she has in her life. Yes. How people are very upset with her, how she's, you know, um, how troubled she is about Mm -hmm. the evil that she sees around her. Oh, Um, she, she goes on. She actually writes me two two Mm -hmm. emails pretty much in a row that talks about how, you know, how, um, just how horrible mm-hmm. life is around her mm-hmm. and and yet how unhappy she is yes um she one of her friends tells her uh brings up the the bible story about the woman that's caught in sin mm-hmm. and the men were going to stone her and mm-hmm. uh, jesus called jesus into that discussion and um she had been married four times and she was living with a man she was not married to. And, and the, the men of the village were going to stone her. And, uh, uh, this friend of hers says, uh, see, Jesus didn't, didn't judge her. And, uh, this girl that wrote me the email says, yes, but he, but you know, uh, God does not care. Uh, you know, God mm-hmm. wants sin punished. And, you know, and she just goes on and on in two emails. And fi- and so I emailed her back mm-hmm. and, uh, uh, and said, you know, <laughs> I 
I kind of have to agree with your friend. <laughs> um, she got mad. You know, actually, she did not get mad because she trusts me. Because oh. she knows, she knows that what I say to her, mm -hmm. that I'm trying to help her. Now I didn't leave her there. I didn't. I didn't just leave her there. I right. pointed out to her that that uh, Jesus didn't step into that situation to mm -hmm. judge that woman. He was no. drawn into the situation by the men that mm -hmm. were judging her. So you know, it shows me another principle. Before we tell people anything, any advice, we have to make sure if we don't have chance to build relationship yet, like Jesus, they just brought her to him. Then we have to gain their trust. Yes. Bring it to peace and yes. then give the truth. Mm -hmm. Yes, and and many of the people that I that I talk to, some of them do not know me at all. Mm -hmm. But uh, some of these people that I talk to, I've talked to over a time, and they trust me. Mm -hmm. They know that whatever it is I say, I'm not saying it to be mean to them. Mm -hmm. I'm not saying it to, uh, and I'm not trying to fix them. Yes, I'm not you know trying to. Intentions. But if you but if you come to me. And ask me uh, as a coach, mm -hmm. how you know I, I'm unhappy. <laughs> what do I do? And this is what's going on around me. I'm I'm not going to get in agreement with you. Mm -hmm. I'm 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 going to talk to you straight, mm -hmm. and I'm going to tell you what what I know about the scripture, and I'm going to tell you what I know about my own heart mm -hmm. and 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 my own life experiences. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, I, I, I just pointed out to her mm -hmm. that, um, uh, that really, well, one of the things that I did point out to her about that story was, you know, because Jesus did not condemn her. Yes, he did say, go and sin no more, but he did not condemn her. And because Jesus did not condemn that woman, she went into her village and began to tell people about Jesus. Come see this man. He knows all things. He did not condemn me. Come talk to this man. He can tell you how to, he can tell you about your own life. She became a witness for Jesus because Jesus did not condemn her. He did not get into judgment. And yes. yet, and yet he is the righteous judge. Mm -hmm. And he did not condemn her. He did not judge her. Mm -hmm. So I did point that out to her. And mm -hmm. I and I told her, I said, you know, God has not called us mm -hmm. as believers mm -hmm. to be judges mm -hmm. of of other people's whether they uh, right and wrong issues yeah. he he's called us to love mm -hmm. he's not called us to fix people mm -hmm. i can't fix people i don't care how many times i talk to you mm -hmm. i don't care how inspirational <laughs> i am when i talk to you i don't care you know none of those things uh I can't fix you. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You really cannot even fix yourself. Yeah, yeah. All you can do is mm -hmm. develop that relationship with God. Listen to that still small voice. Many, many times I tell people that that still small voice says, "Go this way. Mm -hmm. Don't go that way. That way will lead you into something you're not able. You're not." capable you're not ready to fit to face and deal with go this way learn grow mm -hmm. learn of me take my yoke on my yoke is light learn mm -hmm. to me tr learn to trust me and then you may go down that path but mm -hmm. not now you have to learn there there are times and seasons for all of us there's mm -hmm. you know but that but that comes with mm -hmm. developing that deep seated relationship with God. Matthew seven can't say it more clearly than it is. So if you would like read the entire chapter, I'm talking to listeners. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I, so, so I, you know, I just go on to tell her and mm -hmm. to talk to her mm -hmm. uh, about um, we actually, when we judge mm -hmm. others, we actually close ourselves off from opportunities to speak into their life. Oh yes. Uh, you know, we we uh, mm -hmm. trying to fix. I was I was an extreme codependent back in the day when uh, 
I didn't, not many people even knew what that word meant. And uh, I discovered that I had spent my whole life trying to fix people that were unfixable. Yes. And to control people mm -hmm. that were completely and totally out of control. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. at one time that included myself. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and all I had, all I got out of it was frustration, frustration from them, mm -hmm. frustration. Why won't they listen to me? And yet part of my frustration is while well, I'm trying to fix everybody else around me, my own life is falling apart. Mm -hmm. Why is that? Why is that happening? If I'm so darn smart that I can fix everybody else's life, <laughs> why, <laughs> why is my life in such a mess? How did that happen? Yes. Um, we, we, we cannot judge, we cannot even judge ourselves. Mm -hmm. I, you know, uh, mm -hmm. I discovered that many of my own life issues came from events that happened to me as a, as a very young child. And, uh, uh, I actually, and some of these event, the events I never actually forgot. There's mm -hmm. some events that are so traumatic that you don't forget the events, but what, what I learned that I did forget was my thought processes during mm -hmm. those events. And I formed, I formed certain beliefs about myself and about God. Can I ask you a question about that? So forgiving, we understand that when we write on the, on our heart, it takes information and emotion combined together. Now, when you forgive, you sort of erase, not you said, I didn't forget, but I didn't forget. Like emotion, were you able to in, uh, divide an emotion, that anger, and the memory is there, but no more angry emotion. Is that part of forgiveness? Could you talk about it? Because um, you remember. For me, like, no, yeah. Mm -hmm, no for fears. me, mm -hmm. there was a very traumatic event that happened as a young child. Our, my dad actually tried to burn our house up with us in it with my mom and us in it he was extremely drunk and uh my dad really uh, the only two things that i could tell that my dad believed about god was one that uh, if you did not belong to the church the actual church that his family belonged to then you were going to hell and that divorce was the unpardonable sin so many of the things that my dad did was to try to force my mother into divorcing him. At yeah. the same time, he would tell her, if you divorce me, you're going to hell, but you're going to hell anyway, because you don't belong to this particular church. So um, he came in very, very drunk one night, which was not unusual, uh, poured kerosene over most of the house. Mm -hmm. uh, Piled, pulled one of the mattresses off, right, put it right in the middle of the house, poured kerosene on oh. it, and had a match in his hand. I was standing in my bedroom door watching. And he was drunk. He was and he drunk. was very drunk. <laughs> had a match in his hand, and he just fell over and passed out uh, with, with the match in his hand. Uh, if he'd have struck it, he would have been the one that actually would have burned up because he had, he was laying on this mattress that he had poured kerosene over and piled up right in the middle of the house. Well, the fight the next day between him and my mother was mm -hmm. just go ahead and give me a divorce. You're going to burn in hell. I'll be free. Mm -hmm. That'll, you know, and as a little girl, I don't know how old I was, but I was pretty young watching this. I'm thinking, this is what I rediscovered. I never forgot that event. Now I never forgot that event. That's not something uh, I guess you can go into denial deep enough that you can forget it, but there were so many other events that, that, you know, I, yeah. I just never forgot that event. What mm -hmm. I did forget was uh, watching that, the, the opinion I formed about God, I thought, you know, God must be crazy. Huh. If m my, my mother is the only thing that stands between me and my brother's death. Yes. And yet she's going to go to hell because she doesn't belong to this church or group that my daddy's family belongs to. And yet my daddy has been here trying to burn us alive. Yeah. Uh, how God must be crazy. I could not, I, I was too young to, 
to understand it wasn't God that was crazy. It was my daddy. Mm. But I formed, because it was such an emotional, such a strong emotional time for me, that became a subconscious belief. Now, by the time I was a teenager and a young adult, I had kind of convinced myself that, it, that I, I just didn't believe in God. I did. I just believed the God I believed in was, was a crazy God. Now, over time, when I finally came to the place to where I reconnected um, with that event mm -hmm. and reconnected with that thought process, because I had all the all the years I I met Jesus at, in my twenties and I fell madly in love with Jesus and I knew that Jesus loved me and I believed every word about Jesus I saw I read those stories about Jesus I devoured those the New Testament and and I and I just knew I just knew in my heart Jesus loved me but I still had this feeling about God God's crazy you cannot trust a crazy God. He will bless you one day. He will do something horrible to you the next day. And sadly, I got into a, a into a church that they taught that. They I, are, he allows. He's, they will put it well, in the, it will sugar comb allow. I'm yes. sorry, I don't mean to well, apply well, one, but, but also uh, bad things happen to you. God's God's allowing this, but you brought this on yourself. You did something stupid. You you sinned. You mm -hmm. you said a cuss word, or you smoked a cigarette, or you 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 know whatever. You screamed at your kids, or you know whatever. So you <clears throat> so you brought this on the devil. You've allowed the devil into your life, and this is what's going on. And I believed it. I accepted that is true. And and it and so it connected right with the heart belief that I had about God. <clears throat> well, in in the process of me trying to develop a, a different kind of relationship through through a series of events, I decided, you know, I see Jesus, and I found that scripture. Jesus said, "If you've mm -hmm. seen me, you've seen the Father. Mm -hmm. If you want to know what the Father looks like, look at me, because I am the exact representation of God." And Jesus went about healing the sick, yes. you know, loving people. The only people Jesus ever got cranky with were the religious people. He got a little cranky with the religious people. So, so watching Jesus and, uh, and one day I was thinking about that event and all of a sudden, in my imagination, I could see myself as a little girl. I watched that whole event over, and then I could hear what I was thinking. That's when I formed a belief that God was crazy. Oh, my gosh. This is why I have felt this way. It was that little girl, that little three- or four-year-old girl with my crazy daddy. Mm. I was so traumatized. Mm -hmm. I didn't know any different. Mm -mm. That's when I formed that belief. And I was free of it. The minute I saw and understood mm. those thought processes, I was free. So there must be, maybe not always, but must be some event in our life that creates that image. So if you listen to Pat and you know you have a like thinking of God that he is doing this and this and why, and you feel that heaviness, that bitterness. Why God go and Pat, could you talk, how can person go back in time? Just, just tell us back in time or maybe back to his heart zone and find that uh, uh, moment. You have to learn to be quiet. I was never quiet. I was never quiet because I had all these events mm -hmm. that mm -hmm. would trouble me. Mm -hmm. So I, so I was never quiet. I had to, <clears throat> I had to learn to be quiet. Mm -hmm. I had to learn to relax. Yes. I learned to do some breathing exercises that would help me with that. Mm -hmm. I, I learned to get very still and very quiet. And then you must I, be willing. You must be willing. Number one. What if people willing. are angry? They, I don't want to do it. I don't want to do it. Don't tell me nothing. Right. And I, and I and I talk to a lot of people that say, "Why do you want to drag up all that past?" Right. Right. Uh, and and it's not 
Leave it's, me alone. It's so mm -hmm. you can actually be healed. You're not mm -hmm. dragging up the past. The past yes. is there. The past right. is always there. And most of us, unless we unless we just absolutely block that out, and some mm -hmm. people do, but but those people have their own serious issues that mm -hmm. that, that block those events out. Mm -hmm. um, they're there. They're always there. Those traumatic events are always mm -hmm. there. So we have to go back. We have to look at them. We have to, we have to see because many, uh, many of the women that I talked to that have been abused and molested as children, mm -hmm. the belief they formed was I caused this. Oh, you know, this, this, I did something. Um, uh, if I'd have been stronger, uh, I could have prevented this or, or some, mm -hmm. some, some thought like that. And mm -hmm. that has become a subconscious belief, a heart belief with them. And, and so their entire life, they walk around feeling extremely unworthy, extremely full of shame mm -hmm. because they have never gone back and reconnected with that belief mm -hmm. that, um, that was formed during that horrible event. Mm -hmm. Now, and and once once I saw that uh, to go back to you've got to get still you've got to get quiet you've got to learn to listen internally. There's two things that people don't understand the difference. One is emotion, and the other is feeling. Yes. You have to understand the difference between those two, mm -hmm. or you mm -hmm. or you cannot you cannot get down to to the bottom of this. Emotion just comes and goes. I put the radio on, there's a happy song, I'm dancing, I'm singing. That's right. And then the next song that comes on reminds me of a sad event that happened. Maybe this this guy that I dated that I really loved, this was our song and now, you know, now he's gone and um, and I feel real sad. That's emotion. Feelings on the other hand, I my I, I carry my feelings in my gut in my chest and in my gut and often in my shoulders i often carry mm -hmm. I, when i get really stressed and tense i often say i wear my shoulders like earrings you know mm -hmm. in my <laughs> shoulders and uh, um you you have to learn to to yeah yes. to let that down let those shoulders down and uh listen to what what your body's saying Often, uh, I think about I think about people that are uh, have an opportunity to come into their life, and it could be a wonderful opportunity, it could be an opportunity to make more money, and it'd be an opportunity to do something with your life that you've always really wanted to do, but somewhere deep inside you get this feeling, oh, you know I can't do that. You know, every time I always screw stuff up, you know, I'm just not smart enough. You know, my thoughts for years were, mm -hmm. uh, I don't have enough money. I'm either, or I'm, I either have too much money or not enough money. Mm -hmm. I'm either too young or too old. Mm -hmm. I'm either too skinny or too fat. <laughs> I'm either, <laughs> I'm either too smart or not smart enough. You know, every opportunity that came into my life, you yes, know, it yes. was always, I'm too something. Yes. That's a feeling. That's, a that's, that's those internal feelings mm -hmm. uh, that have been internalized. And you have to be, you have to be able to get in touch with those internal feelings mm -hmm. because you cannot be healed from something yes. that you do that. not own. Mm -hmm. You've yes. got to own. They are part of you, right or wrong. Now, when I, when I, and I often talk to people about this. When I uh, remembered that event with my mother and dad, yeah. if I had gone into judgment, if my mother had not let my dad treat her that way, I wouldn't have experienced that, which would have been true. Uh. If my daddy had not been just such a horrible, mean, yeah. vicious drunk, mm -hmm. And that would have been true. Or I could have said, God, you could have prevented that. You didn't have to let this happen. Uh, all three of those would have been judgments. Mm -hmm. And I could have stayed right there in judgment. 
-hmm. And I could have stayed right there and clinging to those judgments and never been free. Mm -hmm. We have to just allow what is to be and accept it, but to realize how we have internalized those things. Judgment will not help us. We have to move away from judgment before we can be free from that. And everything began with one thought. My most quoted, and then I think we probably need to end with this, but my most quoted verse is Mark 4, 24 and 25. Mm-hmm. Uh, I love it from the Amplified Bible. And this is, and I talk to people about this all the time. Mm-hmm. Uh, Jesus said to his disciples, mm-hmm. be careful mm-hmm. for what you hear. And I, and I often, when I'm working with people, I ask them, so where, most of what you hear, where does it come from? And some people say, well, TV or, you know, or whatever. But most of what we hear comes from inside our own head. Hmm. Be careful of what you hear. Be careful, yeah. you know, because we have all kinds of thoughts. Yes. I don't care how, how long you've been a Christian. I don't care how good yeah. a Christian you are. Mm-hmm. We have all kinds of thoughts every day that, that, you know, go through our head. Be careful of what you hear. Can Don't, I tell you the other, uh, quickly, the other translation says, consider carefully what you hear. Yeah, consider carefully what you hear and what you listen to, what you accept, what you grab hold of. Jesus said because of, in the Amplified Bible, it says because of the thought and study mm-hmm. that you give, to whatever it is that you hear, uh-huh. that's what comes back. That's mm-hmm. what's multiplied back to you. So mm-hmm. if you focus on the judgments that you put on people, uh-huh. <laughs> yes. you focus on the mm-hmm. resentment yes. and anger mm-hmm. that you have mm-hmm. about those situations, mm-hmm. if that's what you focus on, that's what you're going to get more back. Mm-hmm. You know, and, and many people say, but you're letting them off the hook. No, you're not letting them off the hook. You're letting your own heart heal. Mm, yeah. Yes. You know, forgiveness. It forgiveness is not um, saying what you did was not wrong. What mm-hmm. my did. What my dad did was very wrong. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Very painful. Very hurtful. I mean, yeah. After, uh, toward the end of his life, me and him had many conversations mm-hmm. about my early childhood. Mm-hmm. Uh, I did not judge him. Even then, I did not judge him. But we we had many conversations about those years. Mm. Uh, it, I didn't I didn't let him off the hook. He mm-hmm. did what he did. He yeah. knew he did what he did, yes. and he owned up to it. Eventually, he owned up to it, wow. and and asked me to forgive him, and mm-hmm. I did. I didn't forget it. I never forgot it. And uh, and many times I had to deal with those emotions. Rem- emotions yeah, not emotions. feelings it's not feelings emotions not feelings but i had to deal with my emotions because if i got angry with him then then i wanted to go back and relive that whole thing so i had to deal thoughts with those emotions, emotions. That cremated the, emotions. the thoughts right the thoughts so <clears throat> you have to you have to learn to deal and all of that all of that comes through just knowing god mm-hmm. knowing yourself knowing scripture, Mm -hmm. knowing your own heart. Mm -hmm. And and all of that does not happen overnight. Mm -hmm. It does. It does happen. And, and I don't care, you know, people, I I talk to many people that are in their fifties, sixties, seventies, and even eighties. And uh, they say, well, it's too late for me. I can't, Mm -hmm. you know, no, it is never too late to have Mm -hmm. a, to have a wonderful life. I don't care what age you are. It's Everyone not. that you carry on your heart can be completely erased because you constantly, to the last second of our life, we write on the tablet of our heart. We keep writing and writing and writing. Yep, Pat, yep. I think this is great subject for next session. What do you say? The, yep. the 80,000 thoughts a day or what? 80, 90,000? We cast it. This is a lot. We are processing a lot of information. We have to be very careful of what we, of of what we hear and what we, what we latch on to when we hear it. 
yes. you, my uh, life, uh -huh. uh, 15 years ago, mm -hmm. I, I didn't understand all of this. 15 years ago, my life was in shambles. My <laughs> life is wonderful mm -hmm. now. I love it. Mm -hmm. I, I, I love, I would not trade this journey for any journey. Pat, you have so much to tell us and we want to hear more. I'm going to let Pat go right now, but uh, for sure, Pat, uh, you got to promise right now, I'm going to have you back. I want more. We want more. This was okay. amazing. Thank okay. you. Thank, Thank you. you. So Thank you for inviting me. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.